What's up, Internet? So, um, back at Bone Saw's Garage, we've got something cool today. Uh, I got a new tool, and what's better than working on cars? It's getting more tools. So, I bought a welder. Um, my dad has a welder, he said I could borrow it anytime. My dad doesn't live that far away, it's maybe a 10 15 minute drive. But getting a welder, bottle, everything kind of moved over is a pain, and it's one of those things where I think I have ADHD because I come up with the most random times to work on things and think of stuff. So I'm gonna show you the welder that I bought, some of the reasons why I bought it, and stuff to consider if you're gonna buy a welder. Voila, the Eastwood. So when I was originally thinking about getting a welder, I did what most people do. I was like, I will buy a used welder. Well used welders are either really old and beat up or they're newer and people still want retail price for them so i started looking around and i felt it found an awesome website it's called weld guru w-e-l-d-g-u-r-u had a lot of great information they do a lot of reviews on welders and that's what kind of led me to this so i got the eastwood mig 180. Um, why did I go with that? Well, I only need about a 140 welder, but this one can do 220. And I have a 220 outlet in my garage. So, utilize what you've got. So, comes with an adapter plug. So, if you don't have 220, you can run it off a of 110. Uh, I won't need that, but I'll keep it just in case I go to somebody else's house. And you got your hose hookup for hooking up your mid gas. A really chintzy faceplate deal for that. You'll need a welding helmet, uh, ground clamp, wire, some extra tips. some MIG wire and then we'll get the welder out okay so as you can see I got it completely unboxed it's up here on the table and it's a fairly simple machine yes I did read the instructions um, and it's fairly easy to set up you know you got your side cabinet all your basic welding guide information as far as basic settings that the machines could go. The nice thing about this one compared to some other machines is they have set uh, voltage limits. So it's like the Hobarts, and I even think the Lincolns are like A, B, C, D, E, F. This one actually has the voltage on there, on the voltage knob, and it's infinitely variable. It's a rheostat instead of just a clicker. Same thing with the wire speed, it's infinitely adjustable. So obviously where your spool goes, Wire goes down through here, comes out with gun. It's got about a eh, five foot lead, which I wish was a little bit longer. Uh, the biggest thing I think I'm upset about, and when I say upset, it's I wish it had a longer power cord. Um, but like on the trigger, very short take up, very good click on it. Um, and I will tell you this, I am not a professional welder by any means. My welds look like a pigeon had diarrhea and is trying to stick metal together with it. So I wanted a decent machine so I could take that variable out. Some people say learn to weld on a crappy machine and you can weld with anything. I don't know if I'm gonna put that much time into it, but I want a machine that's gonna do well for me. So all in all, not bad so far. I'm gonna have to hook it up, see what I can get going with it. Uh, get the wire in there, but let's talk about why I chose this machine and some things for you to consider. First off, power supply. Do you have a 220 outlet in your garage or a 110? So, as you can see, I have a 220 in my garage. It's already wired. It's set up properly. Most people will just have basic 110. Now they make plenty of welders that run off of 110, but you don't want to buy a 220 welder 
and then just try to run it off 110. Yes, they have adapters. Yes, they can have switches that change it to the lower voltage. But generally, if it's a 220 welder, it's going to design to run best on 220. The second thing to consider is price. Welders aren't exactly cheap. You can go really cheap and get like a Harbor Freight Flux welder. And they're, the Chicago Electrics are about 100 bucks. The Titaniums, the green ones that are supposed to be better, can be about 200 um, but it's all where you want to go. This welder, the Eastwood 180, ran about 500 bucks, which I would say is a really decent price for a 220 rated welder. Now, when you look at welders, there's going to be a lot of different things as far as duty cycle and all that. For the home hobbyist with base work repairs, a lot of that's not going to matter. You're going to want to look at, you know, what you can get. Now, I went with Eastwood because it's a name brand. You can get parts for it. There's nothing wrong with the Harbor Freight stuff. A lot of people say they really like them and they, they do really good. But for the 140 rated welder at Harbor Freight, the titanium that's decent, was almost the same price as this. And this one as 220, so it can go with thicker material. And you'll see that's the basics of those ratings. You'll see like 110, 125, 140, 150, 180, 200. The basics of it, you can get really into it, but the basics of it is the thickness of the material you can weld and the weld penetration. Now, do I need a 220 welder for the stuff I do in the garage? Probably not. But I wanted to make sure I had a welder that I really wouldn't grow out of anytime soon as my skills and my projects got bigger. Basic thing to consider is what you're welding. So I'm planning on doing basic metal and sheet metal. So MIG is what's gonna, what I determined is gonna be best for me. If you're gonna be doing like stainless and aluminum and a lot of very detailed work that's, that you want to look very good, TIG might be better for you. If you're gonna be going out in the field, uh, you wanna do like heavier welding or just stick stuff together, stick welding can be the best for you. Again, I'm not a professional welder, so I don't know what's the best. I looked and MIG is the best mix of everything that's gonna work in my garage. The next thing to consider is, do you want a flux welder or a gas welder? What's the difference when it comes to MIG? Well, flux core has got the special material on the wire that when it welds, it releases a gas and that helps protect the weld from impurities as it's cooling down. It makes a lot more smoke when you're welding when you watch videos. This is an awesome option if you don't want to pay for the extras. Also, if you're going to be very mobile with your welding, like taking it from place to place, you don't have to drag a tank along and you don't have the extra expense of a tank. If you want to go with gas, that'll change your options of what you want. Most welders can do both, but if you don't need the gas, then why pay for the extra part of it? The gas will have an inlet for it, come with regulators and stuff like that to either use CO2 or an argon CO2 mix, and that gas flows through the nozzle and that helps protect the weld instead of the wire having the shielding part of it. So since I'm going with a MIG welder, I'm gonna tell you some of the accessories that you're probably gonna need that might influence your decision and how much you wanna pay for a welder. The first thing to consider that you should probably buy with the welder is a welding helmet. So most welders, they'll come with something like this. It's a little face shield, has the tinted lens. You just hold it up and then you weld with the other hand. For most welding, especially as a beginner like me, you're gonna want both hands to steady it. So this, it's kind of crap. I remember having one of these when I first started to learn how to weld on a really cheap welder and it sucks. It just, no. So welding helmets are like anything else. You can go cheap to super expensive. So the welding helmet that I've used is Harbor Freight, Chicago Electric. This one is auto darkening. It has a little sensor in there that once the, you can kind of see through it and then once the light hits, it darkens up. It works okay. Um, I've definitely used a lot better helmets that I borrowed from friends, and honestly, they work a lot better. They have better sensitivity as far as the auto darkening. You can get a better thing where this one, 
I find that it's either way too dark or way too light. Um, but it works for what I got, and it's way better than that face shield. So that should be something you should consider right off the bat. So, about the welding helmet, like I said, that's probably your first thing that you're gonna need because that shield is garbage. Another thing you'll probably need is welding gloves. So, how are these different than just regular mechanics gloves that you use in the shop? You can use mechanics gloves, but generally welding gloves, they'll go up further to protect your arms more when you're welding and they're going to be a thicker heavier material to be able to grab onto hot materials and they're not going to burn through as easy when sparks and stuff hit them so it's not a bad idea again welding gloves can go from super cheap all the way to expensive these they're about five bucks from harbor freight and if you get the nice vulcan ones they're maybe 10 to 15 dollars and that's a small price to pay for not having a hole in your hand or burning your hands because I've done it before and it's not fun. So this is a gas bottle. This one specifically is 75% argon and 25% CO2. It's the recommended gas for general purpose MIG welding. The regulator that's on here is the one that came with the welder. The gas the part of MIG welding, if you're not using flux core wire, is required. Now, a bottle, the cheapest I've seen on average is from Tractor Supply. It's a bottle about that size. It's about $143, but they come empty, so you have to get them filled. The fill cost, it can be about 80 bucks. So that adds another $240 on top of your welder. If you want one of the really big bottles, those can be 300 or more so my recommendation is if you want that but you're really worried about the expense is try to find a local gas supplier here in Colorado Springs we have General Air which I use and they can actually do bottle leasing programs where you're only paying for the fill and then you lease the bottle and the bottle can be as cheap as like 20 bucks a year so that's normally the best option to go with just because if the bottle goes out of cert, they recertify the bottle and you're not paying for the certification, they give you a new bottle. Whereas if you own your own bottle outright and they don't fill it and they just do an exchange, if your bottle fails certification or it's out of certification date, you have to buy another bottle or they have to do a full inspection and fix whatever the problem is. So don't let the price scare you, but know that that is an extra expense. And there's two things left. One is the wire. My welder came with wire. It's 0 .030 wire. They make a bunch of different sizes. Again, 0 .030 is normally touted as the best general use wire. Not the greatest for everything, not the worst for everything. So a welder, you can sit it on the floor, you can sit it on a bench, but a lot of times it's best to have a welding cart, something that brings everything together. It's in one spot, it's mobile, you can move it where you need it. I don't have one. Um, you can buy one from Harbor Freight. Again, about $44 normal, $34 on sale. That's actually a really decent price for just a basic setup. But I bought a welder and I have some scrap tubing. So I might as well build my own because I need the practice welding anyway. And it's just gonna be better if I make my own. So in the next video, I'm gonna work on making my own welding cart. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Hopefully this gave you some ideas about if you wanna buy a welder. And in the next video, I will start building my welding cart and you can see my awesome welding skills at that point. Y'all have a good one. See you next time.